Welcome to Dice Control Dojo. I'm Phil and I practice daily and share my tips so hopefully we all get better at the casino. Today we're starting our detailed practice series on the throw. So we had specifics about our, our grabbing the dice, right, on how to do that quickly. We had a, a specific discussion about that and then the grip. And then we talked about the turn, our relaxation on the turn, our look, and then the, the little backswing before you go. We also talked about breathing. All of those are specific ones in previous videos, and I hope you check them out before we get into this series, which is detailing the throw. Today I'm going to outline how we're going to go through a whole series of specific things you're looking for for each motion in movement from the time you do your backswing through the follow through, okay? There's a lot of things we have to break down and each video will go over that. We're going to discuss our large muscle group and how that plays. I know we talked about practicing it to make sure your large muscles move, but this gets into specifics. What angle are we using and how are we going to move it properly? And, and then we're going to talk a whole series about your fingers. What are your fingers doing during the throw? All right. How does that look? Where, what are they doing? How are they moving? We're going to talk a lot about the follow through. All right. Where the dice angle is. Are we throwing it low and slow? High and drop? What's a better throw? What's a better angle? We're going to go specifically on the thumb. So after the follow through, what does your hand look like? And then what is your thumb doing? Is your thumb at any specific spot here? All of these things are going to be things that we're going to get into detail for and we're going to recognize issues with that. So our whole series here is getting into the details of the specific throw from the angle. And then after that, we're going to talk about what the dice looks like in the air. Once it's in the air, where is it landing? What does that look like? And then when it does land, is it hitting the back wall? Is it close enough, far enough away? We're going to talk about what the dice do in each of these landings, specifically different callouts on what they look like. And then we're going to talk about the speed. Obviously, we talked about how fast you are to get yourself set, ready to go. But this all works together so that when you finally get through this series, it should be just a smooth throw and ending and landing zone. We're going to get specifics into each of these in the upcoming videos. Why are we getting into this? Well, we go through the practice each and every day, right? And once again, if you don't have the tools to recognize what each part is supposed to be doing, how are you supposed to improve with that? So when we go into coaching and mentoring, I know I talk a lot about this, but this is what they dissect. So when I go to a seminar, we talk all about our, our fingers and our, and our control. But then on the throw, we have people, there's some places that'll analyze in video and take a video of you uh, throwing and then play it back to you so you can see what you're supposed to look for, which is extremely helpful to see what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. This is why I videotape my practices. I want to be able to look back on my videos and see what's going on during the video and see what's, what I'm doing and how I can get better at it. So our whole specific series on on uh, getting specific on picking up the dice was very important on getting that down to a science. So if you're practicing with me or you just started and you're looking through this series, I got through the whole parts of picking up that dice. Now we're going to get into the weeds. We're going to get deep into our large muscle groups, as I said, how we're going to throw those dice. This is so important to make sure you're on the same page with me on this journey because my large muscle mass is something that's very important. 
And as you saw in previous videos, for the last six months, I've been working on relaxing these wrists so that I have a nice relaxing method of throwing because I was so tense that when I'd release, my thumb was touching too hard. I was squeezing too hard. I wasn't relaxed. So my breathing techniques and moving forward have all been about how we're going to get this throw down and that it's the same consistent throw each and every time. After our whole series on this, it's about 10, 10 parts to this, then we're going to dissect each part on how to recognize, recognizing what your issue is so you can correct it. There's two things with that. One, during your practice, recognizing how the dice are landing, what did you do wrong, and then there's a whole part to that when you're live at a casino. How can you adapt it? Should you adapt it? Once again, if, if you're throwing good numbers and it's not a horrible throw, do you even want to do that? I mean, if you're on game time and you've been practicing, don't think about it. Just throw it. Sometimes I see so many people that overcorrect when they're at the casino that they go, like this last one, I threw it way too hard, right? So they, they spurt. So in my brain, I'm like, okay, I got to slow down and, and throw it slower. Well, guess what? Then you, then you overcompensate, you throw it short, and then they yell at you for not hitting the back wall. And that's all because you're overcompensating. So while we're practicing and we're analyzing, we're fixing little tweaks as we go. But then hopefully when you get to a casino, unless there's a major meltdown or something that somebody's obviously seeing, and one of my team members would say something like, my God, you're, why are you throwing it into the corner? Where are you throwing this? Are you aiming where you're getting? Unless we're having a complete breakdown, we should be just thinking about the smoothness of the throw and just making sure everybody is that you're successful throwing it where you want it to go. So this whole next series is going to break down each thing. We want to make sure we have a nice relaxing circle here. We want to make sure when you release your dice that it's centrifugal force, not your fingers. You're not pushing with your thumb. You're not releasing with your fingers here. And we'll go over that and show you in slow motion what that looks like to ensure that your dice are just releasing at the right way. Then once they are out of your hands, what does your hands look like? We're going to go over that. Where is your thumb? Where are you looking? Are you watching the dice? When you're first practicing, you're watching everything you're doing. Once you're locked in, you should be focusing on where that throw is. Where are you supposed to throw it? Not your eyes up and down looking at it where everything is. If you have partners or, or team members, let them do that for you. For you, I'm locking in on where I want to throw it, and I'm throwing that landing zone. I'm not paying attention if the dice is separating one up, one down. I know you do it in practice, but once you get closer to the casino, you've got to make sure your, your momentum and your routine goes so that when you get to that casino, it's a nice, smooth transition. I'm looking, I'm throwing. My follow through is where it's supposed to be. My thumb is where it's supposed to be. And that's how I'm ending. So we'll get deep into each one of these in my upcoming videos. So I hope you join me. And as always, as always, no matter how you throw, what you throw, or even if you don't throw and you're just a random thrower, just know that the best betting strategy I can give you, uh, the best tip I can give you, is to just throw for a long, long time. Hope to see you in the next video.